Listen, again, I have taught you in this house that the unit of destiny is time. And one of the ways to abort a glorious destiny is to corrupt the potential for achieving much with respect to time. Your lifetime is a measure of your birth from the day you transit, separated from your body. And one of the strategies to abort great destinies is that Satan creates obstructions and impedances on your way so that you are not able to do much in time. But there are two systems of advantage that have been deployed by the intelligence of God to remedy that constraint. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. When these twofold forces work in the life of a man, you must gain time. Restoration brings back time. Speed accelerates you to do much within a short time. This is what I want to declare over your life. Speed is a very powerful system of advantage that much can be done within a short time. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who called me, the one by whom we have obtained apostles. In the name of Jesus Christ, by this apostolic and prophetic mantle, I speak to someone. May that grace for speed come upon you now. May that grace for speed come upon you now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Hallelujah. Let me declare over you. If there is anybody here that the spirit of death is already tracking, that 20, help them please, that 2022 will be your last year and then something mysterious will happen. In the name of Jesus, I pray you shall not die. I say it to you prophetically, you shall not die. Not by the arrows that fly by day, not the noisome pestilences, not the destruction that wastes in noonday. I speak to you that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side, but none shall come nigh you. With your eyes will you see and behold even the reward of the wicked. In the name of Jesus Christ. Job said the Lord will deliver you from six things. Yes, seven. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Whoever has spoken against you and programmed the climate of death, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. I cancel that negative statement. In the name of Jesus. The final prayer I'll pray for you. Please be patient. And then... Since he's here, the prophet of God, Pastor Emos Fenwa, I would just plead with him to just come, even if it's just in a minute, to make a prophetic declaration over you. And I've seen God honor the words upon his mouth, and I know what God can do when our hearts are open to receive. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap up with our end of year sacrifice, and that will be it. I want to pray concerning your finances. Please look up. I don't believe in poverty. It's already clear. There is no point hiding or playing around it. There's, there's nothing, nothing to explain about it at all. I'm not talking of fanatism and this obsession for money. We are kingdom people driven by purpose and intelligence. So when we talk about things like this, please, this is not an attempt to fuel lust in the heart of one who is not serious with God. We're, we're talking about the king. That's why I started by telling you that our ultimate motivation is to see Jesus revealed. I have taught you here that money has three major assignments. Number one, for your comfort. God blesses us so that we can live a comfortable life. Number two, God blesses us so that we can provide financial resources for kingdom advance. Number three, God blesses us so that he can give us an opportunity to be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Money becomes a tool and evidence to that blessing to help us. And financially speaking, money has two assignments. Number one, efficiency. Number two, time redemption. That's it. The assignment of money in the life of any believer is to help you be efficient Efficiency is a product of gaining time. It's a dominion system. Number two, time redemption. It affords you the opportunity to do much 
within time and then to be efficient while you do so so one of the ways to waste your time is to keep you limited financially this finance thing has limited a lot of people especially because of the realities that have happened across the economy of nations I have taught you here that there are many dimensions of wealth and I am not one of those preachers that downplay the place of value intelligence contribution I have taught you extensively there is an economic system to the kingdom there is a science to wealth wealth is not arbitrary is 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 a response to value there are intelligent people here business people captains of industry and I'm not here as a man of God to downplay your pedigree but I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth in the Bible every time there was an economic problem it was not economists that were called it was the prophet that had to answer why is there an economic problem and the prophet said by this time tomorrow the prophetic dimension to wealth is called sovereign wealth this is not wealth by value this is wealth by the finger of God it, it happens to men but as instructed by God when that when the prophetic word comes let me tell you what happens the spirit of wisdom follows that prophetic word and starts looking for human actors that must make that word not look like a lie so there were four lepers who sat down and they did not even know what started moving them they said why do we sit down here that courage was not normal it was the product of the spirit of wisdom responding to the prophecy of Elijah Elisha in Samaria one person sent by God can schedule a season in your life that brings you to permanent rest are you ready to receive and by a prophet he says the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet no matter how blessed you are I have taught you here that the standard of being financially blessed is that you can give so much to the kingdom without it affecting your overall financial health if you have not gotten to that state it means you must open your heart for more in the name of Jesus Christ by the privilege of grace and apostleship and by the power of the prophetic I speak over someone may that grace that makes rich may that grace that can empower a man rolling away financial shame from lives and families receive that grace right now receive that grace right now upon the works of your hands receive it upon your mind receive it in the name of Jesus Christ and when Saul met with prophet Samuel Samuel told him number one the donkey you have been looking for has been found prophecy brings restoration number two as you return you will find three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and give you that is honor and favor number three you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the hand of the Lord will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy truly the prophetic can bring prosperity it can be not, it can be abused but within the boundary of scripture and the boundary of doctrine for the believer it can work wonders I say it again the man to surprise you by God I send them to you prophetically the man raised by God to be his system of help towards your life and finances to bail you out from shame and reproach receive of their ministry right now hallelujah Please let's invite Pastor Emos Fenwa for him.